Welcome back, everyone, to week three, night two of the HEC ANZ Premier League. And we are about to go into game number two between a Xylophone Dudes and Reality. A Xylophone Dudes have already shown a dominance on a Volskaya Foundry, taking out a, you know, like, it's not a, quite a clean victory, but they did seem to have a lot of structures up at the end of the game. But Reality are looking to uh, fight back on Battlefield of Eternity. Uh, Vandy, what are you most going to enjoy about this next map? <laughs> The punch on. <laughs> That's what I'm going to enjoy. <laughs> it's going to be an absolute punch on. Reality picked this map for a reason. It's a map that they feel quite confident on, especially in terms of if you looked at Rich Gang E Thugs, which was a roster that um, a couple of these members were on. It was all about picking maps where you didn't have to worry about the sort of micro decisions, where you, when to take camps, what to do. It's all about that team fight. And that's where reality can really start to shine. So really hoping that they can then pick a comp that accentuates that and go from there. Yeah, no, we just look at the objective, you know, when the objective does spawn, uh, you look at these situations where you're fighting on it and then all of a sudden they sort of change positions. So behind that positional change, it's, well, what do you do as a team? Mm -hmm. Potentially that leads to a lot of punching on. And if there's something that we do well in the ANZ region, that's have a good old Barney in the middle of the map. <laughs> <laughs> can't help but go for that um a lot of teams as well they like to pick heroes with race um i guess some more popular ones that we've seen hanzo he's always if not banned on this map i mean we did see i believe it was kind of one of the premier teams where they let him through and they absolutely regret it mm. um, just trying mm. to remember the name of the team i know it's altivian's roster um but yeah they let hanzo through and we were all just so surprised we're like no one lets hanzo through on this map <laughs> Do you have old roster or is it new, new? New roster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Aztec Entertainment. Um, I mean, look, Hanzo is just so powerful on this map purely because while you're attacking the, uh, you know, the enemy's immortal, not only are you getting damage on the immortal, but you're also doing a little bit of damage to the uh, enemy team that's trying to defend it. So it's that sort of um, odd situation where he's kind of getting double value. So that's one of the, uh, you know, the big values, uh, say value a lot. Uh, the big benefit is having Hanzo <laughs> on this map. But um, look, Reality need a big game here. If they lose this map, they are going to go down 2 0 And it's going to really start to push them out of the sort of mid-team reality of the season and push them down into uh, one of the lower tiers. They don't want to be in that situation, obviously. So they'd like to win here. But you know, we're going to see. They, they, I kind of saw it funny, Vandy, that this map was picked by Reality. So they want to have this great team fight situation. But didn't we just see Xylophone Dudes show that when it comes to the uh, big five-man you know, uh, team fight, they just, they just executed it, the play so well? They do execute their plays so well. And what I also do need to see coming out of reality, we saw moments where they were able to really just work together and get those picks that they needed. But also with that Abathur that they had, the soak was continuously going, yes. But they weren't able to really utilize that synergy that Genji and Abatha has yeah. as well to really empower. So a lot of that was kind of lost. And they need to just think a little bit more about their draft and more synergy. If Dan Genji had someone else to die with him, say if they opened with Ruridin or even if we had a Yorel, that could just really accentuate the team composition that they were trying to bring. That's it. So we're going to see you. Uh, ooh, maybe they can do something like that on a map. Uh, we're getting the teams already up. Uh, reality just taking a few extra moments to uh, come up with a team strategy they need to win before we uh, head into the draft phase. But uh, I'm, I'm excited. I'm going to see. I, I really, I want to see reality come in here. I want to see these go to a third map because they're just, they're always, they're always so refreshing to watch. Just the way they draft Bandy and even the way they play. It's, uh, it brings a, a buzz to, uh, a buzz to my enjoyment watching these two. Well, the draft naturally changes as the night will go on as well. Once you get that third game, because it becomes that do or die situation. I mean, it is right here for reality, but mm. even more so because both teams are feeling the pressure as opposed to just one team right here. Uh, something as well that really we see a lot on Battlefield Tony. I said, yes, there's really limited micro on this map or macro decisions that you're making, but still you are able to utilize the camps in a way to telegraph rotations coming out, but also to get value. So if you are going to go all in on the race, you can have that 
a shaman camp, pushing in the top lane and get someone to answer to it. So if you do then start a fight, that's your opportunity to do so when you've got a 4v5 situation. Yeah, and it can be a little bit um paragraph well that's going on. You know, you're seeing there, you're looking to see like well, how many people I've only got four people at the moment. I wonder why that is. And then you look for an opportunity to pounce. Or if you lose it, it's like, oh no, we have to send someone to deal with the uh, mercenaries now. You know, you always you put in those bind, those tight situations. It's it's damned if you do, damned if you don't. I'll tell you what's damned if you do. Both Shimada brothers taken out very early in the ban phase right here. Too good to be let through on this. And yeah. it's actually going to be Garrosh to open things up this time around. So Maev, really we've seen if she isn't being banned, she's being taken by a team. Does Reality want to roll the Maev? Yeah, well, I mean, it's there for the taking. But what would they do? Because if, the do, if they do take it, they're losing out a little bit on, let's say, race potential. You know, that's a big factor on this map as well. Do we have something that can actually damage the, uh, you know, damage the immortal here and get us those values? Or are we going to go all in team fight and have to take out big, you know, big fights, big plays? You know, and it's not a decision they're making lightly either. Well, it exactly is right, Disco. Do we want to go more on the fight? Do we want to go more on the race? Hanzo, I mean, the biggest racer of them all is taken out right here. So as I said, other picks that people like to lean on, you do get things like your Nara's Valor, even um, Tychus comes out into play, Artanis, things like this, where really when you do have that uh, objective with that huge monster that you want to shred down, these heroes start to come into shine. But that's going to be Sailor's armor right there, and also mm -hmm. double support. So who's playing who? Yeah, this is a. Uh, I and it, 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 again, again, it's other fun dudes always bringing the uh, bringing the best to the yard. Even with the doubles, we still see reality going. No, no, Chogal into that. Thank you very much. We don't want to see that sort of great double support line. Um, Anna's, you know, Anna's a character that we did see. Get some <laughs> I, I love these guys. They, I can't, they I can't help but love at the goal ban. I mean, the Cho's already taken out. It's a free ban. You don't need to, but they said we'll complete the pair. But there could have been a strategic ban as well. Just we touched on it. You open up the hero pool to more choices. Yep. By not banning something meta, but I still think it's funny. If you're banning one, they're like, don't worry, we'll join you on that one. So yeah, both teams working in synergy here. That's it. Something we don't see a lot of in this region. Teams getting along. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. The um, um, Disco, with the double support, do you think that they're going to be running a hyper carry? Let's fly. Well, you would think that, right? That they want something that is not going to die. They're going to like, we, we want a hero. And we want to put him to odd positions. We want to put him in dangerous positions. And we want to be able to make sure that that character is alive at the end of whatever position they were in. Um, the false that picked up can potentially... Yeah, there is potential for really good um, like, play on this map. Particularly if you're, say, with mercenaries, you can push with them. Or if the enemy team has picked them up against you, you can do it to clear and then get back into the fight. And throw, like, look, this is the reality's lineup. Who is going to be in the top lane, Vandy? <laughs> I'm just like trying to puzzle out. So yes, I'm thinking they might have a hyper carry. Another way they could do things is by getting a composition that never dies. So get your bruises, get yeah. your tanks, and just go all in on that. But you'd lose, as you said, in terms of the wave clear. You're not really going to have a lot by yeah. already picking the double support. So we need someone with wave clear. We need someone with damage, and we want someone preferably with sustained damage as well that your supports can keep alive. Mm. It's just a really interesting. I'm just wondering, like, what's what's the master plan here at play? Oh, it's is it going to be the Vala? Right? You know, <laughs> triple support? Why not? Tass that can go on the top lane. You know, he's got some wave clear. That's going to be great, mate. There we go. Bit, bit of reality coming back into it. People come to their senses. And Malfuel should be going to the top lane as the sub. Um, but you know, we're always a bit scared what our xylophone might pull out next. And reality, I sort of like their lineup. I think they damage a little bit, so it's a little bit on the weaker side, and so we should be seeing something along to like to bolster that. Um, I actually wouldn't mind seeing, or I want a proper tank. But if they're not going to go a tank, 
let's bring Lee Mean to the mix, uh, Vanny. Let's get all the usual suspects out here on a battlefield of a team. <laughs> let's just let's get, get the weirdest it. composition on both <laughs> teams. Why not break everyone's minds? But no, let's not do that. The Grey Mean, <laughs> it started to bring back a little bit more sense into the draft right here. He's got great race potential. He's going to be that sustained damage that I was yeah. thinking of. And the Malfield as well. You already touched on a little bit. Great tank buster, but also will fulfill the role of having that solo lane. Yep. It does put reality in a strange position because if they do go another tank, it kind of is what Malthiel is looking for. And if not, then it just gives him a very, very squishy front line. Well, not squishy, but it just really weakens it. So saying yeah. we don't mind about that. We want to have a strong front line. We want to go something a little bit meta. Let's make yep. sure we have a Muradin right there. Well, they had to. They had to. Yeah, there, was no, there was no other option really for them then. I mean, it'd be being a bit silly talking about another assassin, but yeah, if they had to. Also, the Falstad, he gives them a little bit of that global pressure as well. Oh. On a two-lane map, it's going to be limited pressure, but we have often seen Dahaka fulfill the same role, where then he's able to just continuously push, even with the Shaman camp, once it's taken, to get even more value, yeah. until you really force someone out of the immortal phase to come and answer to that pressure. Mm. I, it's, it's going to be an interesting game here. Um, look, Xylophone dudes, they've got the Garrosh, and he just has so much play potential on this map of Battlefield. That look, I'm I'm putting this in the ball court. I'm if I had to pick a side, I'd I'd say Xylophone dudes is definitely got a stronger draft. But we are gonna see what happens on Battlefield of Eternity. Quick shout out again to our sponsor, McDonald's, uh, really helping support and growing of the station. Thank you very much, guys. All right, Disco is going to be Battle for Tony. As we said, this was chosen by Reality, giving over the first pick to Xylophone dudes. Let's hope they don't regret it. Let's see if we can get a game number three tonight. We have both teams loading on in, and I'll introduce the team on the blue hand side, on the <laughs> on the left hand side. It's going to be Xylophone dudes with Tommy playing Greyman, Blaze on Garrosh, Sarah Lee playing Malfield, Sailor on Anna, and Bouncy playing Uther. That's it. And over on the red side, it is a reality looking to uh, to get back in, in this series, pick up a map, and go to game three. And it is a demise on a four. Murad is being played by Formed, the role is being played by Booty, Pesky is on Malfurion, and Blaze is being played by Hat. Alrighty, Disco, getting into this, I'm having a quick peek at the talents. Nothing too far out of the norm, but I have actually seen Ana pick up the grenade calibration, and normally we see Ana's really like to go for the sleep, so... It's just an interesting, I guess, adjustment. I do like it because I can see where we're going to get some value out of it. So you can actually start doing more damage, but hold the phone right here because Tommy, he's going to be the one focused in this first battle. He's enjoying, he's enjoying. It's like, sir, may I rub your shoulders? May I do next? I gain the full healing treatment, being able to stay alive in that situation. <laughs> just having a laugh about it. Crash Lightning as well, being picked up by Thrall. Because he's laning in the bottom lane as well, should be relatively easy to complete quite fast. So you can get a little bit of that power spike. And you hit people that damage. I think one thing we need to know, Reality's line up is a little low on damage. Particularly the fact that they're coming up against a double well. So Form taking a, taking a bit of a pounding, the back's out. Uh, he's murdered, so he's always going to be safe in those situations at the early stages. But I love the double lane pressure going on behind Blaze and Dad White now on the top against um, Malfew. But again, formed again with the pummeling. He, he's living life on the edge. He's loving it. Hey, you gotta live life on the edge. You only live once. So formed is taking every bit of that right there. In our top lane, it's gonna be pretty even match between Hack and Sarah Lee. They both have sustain for days. But in this bottom lane, with Demise also rotating down to join the fight, this is where things yeah. can get interesting with that poke that he can bring. I just didn't see there. Did Demise, did he fly down or did he manually walk? Manually. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I was just having a good laugh where he's he like, got okay. the global. No, <laughs> yeah. I didn't see for you tonight. I actually didn't feel he might have flown. No, no, he, I don't, I don't. He, he just walked down, yeah. He walked okay. it. And that's an interesting point. It means he still has access to his global right now, which means that he can fast rotate back to the top lane and maybe get a kill on Malfield if he's out of position. But right now, Merc Camp, do or die, everyone's here. Tommy gets uh, sectioned out and gets removed. That's what we like to see there. We like to see Tim just trying to throw everything offline. Anna's being followed up on. There is no one to protect you. Sorry, Anna. Uh, you were meant to keep the team alive, but you found yourself dead instead. Not what you should be doing as support. 
Now it's early game, Vandy, so they'll be back in time for the objective. But uh, that's uh, that's puts the Zylophone dudes in a little bit of a tough spot because they are lacking on experience now. Well, you're talking about being out of position, and that was Tommy right there. He was so far in the thick of things that his healers couldn't reach him. And yes, you've got two of them, Tommy, but they need to be able to reach you to heal you. <laughs> so that's where things just kind of went wrong for them, and they overstayed, and they were split. So that was really a nice opportunity for reality to see those kills and take them right there. One thing I want to say as well, Demise has gone for a very, very weird first talent choice, where he's opted for wingman, and normally fast turns won't take this. So either go for either if they want to go Mage Faust, they go for the Hammering Talent, otherwise, if not, they'll go for the um, the Auto Attack Talent, but he's opted to go for this, so meaning he can be bribing any camps that are constantly up. Oh, talking about bribing, Meriden's being bribed right now to uh, try and stay alive here by his team. Uh, he does manage to get back on, but he's on such low health that their front line's kind of weakened from that. Obviously, False that actually falls a little bit off screen right now, and Reality are on the back foot. Nice throw comes in, but Tommy's looking under pressure there. He's receiving the heal, still alive. The power of double support when they're in range. It's great. He can just go to town here. And that was a nice Urshia KO come out, but look at that reform thrown. Again, Garrosh separating him out. Blaze goes in. Again, he's trying to connect onto the hyper carry Tommy. They can't quite make it. They cap themselves to Meriden for their time, but he leaps out, demise back into it, almost gets stunned by the Immortal. But he does manage to uh, dodge it in the last second. The clutchest of heals going out on Tommy in that last team fight to keep him alive. And he even gets the kill to walk away from it. That is the power right there of the double support. Please don't bring it back into the meta, is all oh. I'm saying here. That replay, you just look at it. Tommy is just taking a full on beating. But like you said, Dandy, when you've got two of your best friends, Anna and Uther, healing you up, you're not going to die anytime soon as we uh, get back into the uh, mainstay of the game. And the Immortal has been picked up on the side of the Xylophone dude, but the shield has been bursted tremendously by reality. And only a smidgen remains, meaning they're not going to get as much value on it as they do convert it from the ranged attack into the uh, melee one. But behind this, a lot of fun dudes going, well, we'll look for value in another way. We'll call it your life as they try and take out Muradin or Booty, whoever uh, fails to escape first. Big fight happening in the middle lanes right here while the Immortal starts to charge on down and make some work of this front wall. Instead of pushing with the Immortal, you can already see there's a small health pool because the shield was already burnt down. The yep. call from Xylophone dudes was to come to the bottom lane and start to work on this. Demise with the global instantly responding to try and clear them the waves and keep them back. Just stall them a little yep. bit as much as you can. Yeah, that's it. You know, kill the minions means the fortification for the targeting hero. Targeting hero and that will help with that. But his team's rotated down now. Murden's gone and gets flipped out by our garage. I love it. Blaze is the next one on the list, but a nice and tangling there, locking the team down. Ana gets taken out. One less healer on the side. Good thing they got Uth to back it up. Bouncy on low health has to back out. Tommy cannot engage. There's not much damage on the board for a Xylophone dudes as they disengage from this bottom fight. Absolutely huge entangling roots coming out this game from Pesky right there. The deep roots, you can really see how much of that area is becoming locked out, and every time they're all grouped around, it's really the opportunity that she wants. Another root going out there, so you can really see that's the that whole section just already locked out. Flay's just trying to come in for the invade. He's not even gonna get close. Yeah, you know, he kind of gets a bit scared as well. You know, he's locked down. It's like, ooh, who else is here that can burst me down? I think it's kind of like a bit of a scare tactic. The team didn't rotate and uh, really try and deal with it. But right now, both sort of just engaging into each other. Xylophone dudes want to take out those mercs. Could this be reality's opportunity to uh, get a kill if they overextend? Both healers are back in the bottom lane now, so it means Tommy's going to be pretty much healed up for the majority of this. And I don't think reality will be able to score anything. Reality, both teams, they're waiting for their bruiser cams to come back online, but they'll really overlap with when the immortals start to spawn. So if they get a kill right here, it'll just really bolster their push. Yeah, like it's, it's the objective right now, anyone dying, is a bad news for the team. And you can just see how instantly the side guys of the Zalathan dudes backed out. They're like, oh, it's a mortal spawn time. Let's get out before something tragic happens. In the top reality, you can see how good Demise and Hack are. They sort of sense that the guys are out of lane. But look at that great rotation there by XD. They actually overextend to get this kill on the blaze, but it's a great secure for them going to the objective. Demise comes in, bad situation for Anna, gets taken out again. She looks, must be the target of choice. Flay's great, Urshad is really nice. 
the locking out the enemy team. Gets done. Rush will fall regardless. Tommy is by himself. Booty's following him. Where is he going to go? He's got nowhere. Booty's like, I can waste some time doing this. I can show you who I am. And he goes in for the engage. He does look for the last opportunity to tack him down. Tommy finally falls as the uh, as reality starts to pick up the enemy is immortal. So they get that pick onto hack, sure, but they wasted so much time in doing so. It really allowed reality to really get back, rotate there, and start to go on the fight. And they immediately jumped on the supports right there. We'll start to see once 10 is around, perhaps there'll be a bit of a different story. Once they have heroics, it will be more likely able to save somebody. But they're having a hard time of it right now, and this is double support where the weakness starts to show. Yeah, you can just see, you know, they can go in there, they can remove and putting pressure on one support does reduce their ability to heal if they're having to panic and try and survive. Uh, look at that, false has gone to the bottom lane there, Demise. So if you put pressure on, um, Malfield looking for a play now, Demise under pressure, Matthew's going in. Look at that play! It. Oh, that's beautiful! They just rip throw out of it like it was nothing. Demise, nice money guster. Comes in just this place, but the blaze bunker goes down, keeping Merv safe for the moment there. But the Xylophone dudes, they're not falling at all. We talk about the problem of double support, but now look at the benefit of double support when the reality aren't in there to really pressure. I was just having a good laugh because it was pretty much into the fray, straight into the Divine Storm. I was thinking we might see Divine Shield because we're starting to see members struggle to stay alive, but they wanted that hard engage. And it really worked out quite nice for them if they can get that solo target or just a squishy right there. That's going to be the play, I guess, time and time again. But on the flanks, Demise is putting out a lot of pressure on the sailor into the fray, gets him out of there. But that leaves the Immortal free to start getting raced. Yeah, that's it. And, you know, we just watched the replay of uh, how... Um... Malfuel really separated reality out and allowed us to uh, get that kill, get those kills, I should say. Now, the Immortal has been picked up again. This time, however, the race actually went in the favor of reality. But Azalefone Dudes is coming in for a big brawl in the middle. We talked about the punch on, but it hasn't gone their way as the party van, or should I say the party bunker, comes out for reality and they convert it into three kills. Oh my god, Vanny, that has flipped. This game, a Xylophone dude have been in such a strong position, making great decisions, great moves, but just then, reality flipped Not the lid right the minute XD failed. The next fight, this XD got desperate, and uh, I guess that's why they are called XDs. On that replay you just saw, so pretty much it was just everybody piling in. I don't even know why Xylophone dudes wanted to take the fight. They thought that they had Blaze isolated. No freaking way. Pesky had the Entangling Roots ready to go, followed by the Twilight Dream and Earthquake. There was no way you were getting out of that one. So much yeah. CC for days, locking you up, and you're also clustered so easily. So Thrall, you can get maximum value out of the Chain Lightning. Yeah, that was just sick thing to watch. It was like the sounds of bones cracking. It was sickening to watch, it's disgusting to hear. And look, this is just really uh, accelerated reality's uh, chance on this map here. Uh, they've got double pressure now on keeps. Uh, they haven't fallen, no, no keeps have fallen, but now they can they can have their choice, Fandy. You know, do they go for the lane or the lane, depending on our opportunity presented. A Xylophone dudes have yet to actually destroy any fortifications on the flip side. Just struggling because a lot of their clear has to come out of Greymane as well as Malthil, and that is just resources that you don't really want. Malthil should just be in the top lane, constantly pressuring mm. out. He can't now that that fort's gone. He's just waiting <laughs> to see where members of reality are before he ventures out. And he's oh, found I've them. Re yeah, he's found them, all right. And they found him as they pile onto the uh, the of death. He's going to try to back himself up with his uh, ultimate. It was not enough. The rest of the team rotates now. They flip murder and they receive attack by the towers. Taunt comes out, he should be taken out there. Nice pickup, nice kill, but we see that they're gonna lose more members. Greymane's gone down, there's no damage. But we see the flip side, we see now uh, Falls that fall on the side of reality as the Immortal spawning. This is looking a little bit disastrous actually for both teams. Slightly in the favor of reality because they haven't lost as many members and they can actually really start hammering in the top lane. So that two for two trade right here, but because they had the Khazra camp and they already won so close, to those keep balls, as you said, Disco, they were able to at least push up, get a little bit more experience for themselves, and set themselves up to try and get 16 first. If they get that talent to advantage, that's just really where it'll start to become do or die for Xylophone dudes. They don't have much 
uh, much many more team fights to go for them because time is running out in that race as well. You can see with all members piling on into the immortal, how quickly they're able to take it out. Yeah, and look, reality have you've got the level advantage. Um, I mean, it's not tier advantage just yet; they're on the same count, but the, the levels do help. And they can run behind this, grab up the Merit camp. That, uh, you know, that wingman being taken by Demise doing great value. It's almost like instant mercenaries during the exchange. But look at this, you know, Meriden was by himself and they're taking advantage of it. He has left out there. Demise finally getting there. Nice Mighty Gust pushes them all back. They're fighting heavily on now, so it seems they can race through. But XD's coming up there looking for an opportunity. Reality's backed out. Great position. That Those Mercs, they just picked up Vandy. It's going to start really opening uh, this objective for him soon. Oh, but look at that. Mercs is getting taken out. He is removed. He went, you know, Zig when he should have zagged. Nice kill there for XD picking it up, however. They've got an Earth Shift space going down, pumping out a little bit of damage for the side of a reality. But it's not going to be enough. They can't deal with this uh, double support. No, they have finally rotating onto it, so they're selecting Anna priority. Matthews in the back line will eventually fall as well. Can't find any value. And XD again finding themselves on the worst end of that team fight. They just can't pile in because they're so melee heavy. You can already see any chance that they do try to get the entangling roots is there to answer. But Demise, he's been picked up right here. That was a very sharp kill. Finally, they get a squishy target. And in mere moments, they're able to decimate him. But doesn't matter. The race is still coming strong on the side of reality. Reality have to win this. This is a defense that XD cannot make, especially with those mercenaries in the top lane pushing into the keep. So it's, um, look, it's all fun dudes are losing everything right now, losing on levels, talent, on lanes, on objectives. I can't think of a single thing they've won in the last two minutes. Reality, they definitely are picking their fights quite well and they're waiting. Once they're all grouped up, that's pretty much their go sign. The Earthquake comes out, the Twilight Dream, the Entangling Roots to lock them up. They have so much Wombo. But also, if they do get one person isolated, as we saw with Sarah Lee, the Mighty Gust can be used to be that playmaker as well, just gusting yep. him into their team. Oh, that's an amazing, amazing use of the uh, team's abilities. They're here at the abilities right now from reality. As they push into the second keep on the map, will be the second one they pick up. XD won't be able to defend against this. We might see the end of the game as a new wave of do push in behind this immortal. The shield's still up as well. Oh, XD's gone in. A mighty gust resets it all as the pawn is used. And also the uh, earthquake locking everyone down in place. Sarah Lee taking a lot of damage. is about to fall. Bunker's been popped. Keeping the rest of the team alive. Phase will be next. Two down for XD as the immortal punches us on onto the core. It's not looking good. It's just a distraction. Even if the Xylophone dudes were alive right now, it's still going to be GG for them as a game number two goes in favor of reality. Vandy, we will be going to map three. That was just huge bunker right there. The Tormentor <laughs> Souls popped by yeah. Sarah Lee, constantly in the back line, and they all started to drop. They all started to chunk. They just need a little bit more burst damage, but the bunker came mm. out, bought them enough time for that last team fight, and then it was easy pickings when they came out right there. It's really topping the damage right there for Siege as well as hero damage. Yep. It kind of tells the tale. Tommy, any chance he was trying to go in, he was just getting completely locked up. And Booty, he also topped the damage quite easily in terms of that because we saw Demise's slightly strange build all into Lightning Rod, something I haven't seen for quite some time. But hey, yep. got the win. It worked. Yeah. yeah. What was the thing about reality that they, um, they played a tremendous game just then. You know, they picked a... Uh, a little bit of a, an odd draft dream, drafting priority, but still managed to pull out for him. Um, I think where it really, the tides of darkness turned on, um, on Xylophone dudes was when they made that huge misplay after losing out the Immortal. Um, they all went in to try and kill a out of position Blaze, but they ended up getting slaughtered themselves. Just a lands to the slaughter, Vandy, and there's no mm. Butcher on this map. Well, also, they had double support, and you can already see the weaknesses coming out of there. You're really sacrificing your way of clear. Mm. You're sacrificing your team fight potential. And if you're not keeping your carries alive, you're not doing anything. So they yeah. just hindered themselves in their draft. Yeah, you know, it's, um, I mean, it had moments of potential. You saw how, you know, the survivability was coming to Tommy, but it just didn't work out for him at the end, Vandy. But uh, guys, we're just about to go to a short break. Vandy, we're going on to map three. Before we do hit that break, what map would you like to see um, them play? 
Mm, maybe something like Braxis, just because I think we've seen a lot of the clown Fiesta maps, as they're <laughs> called. So why not make yeah. it a three for three? <laughs> Keep up, the, keep up the momentum. Well, guys, <laughs> don't go anywhere. We're about to go into map three for Xylophone versus, versus reality. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back shortly.